Blockchain Use and Land Registry of Georgia. The Republic of Georgia is the first country to introduce blockchain technology into its real estate registry. In this video, you will learn the project details and understand why it's hard to call it a success story. Since 2016, this case was often being inaccurately reported by the media, bloggers, academic researchers, and politicians. Eventually, it created a perception that Georgia developed the first blockchain-based land registry. But it's not true. Hi, my name is Alexei Konashevich, and you are on Blockchain State. Bitfury is the company behind this project. They offered the Georgian government this pilot scheme in 2016 and provided the necessary resources. They created a system module in addition to the registry, it receives cryptographic hashes of entries in the registry database and puts these hashes in the private permissioned ledger. I don't know if it's distributed at all, but it was deployed on Bitfury's DLT framework, Exonum. So technically it can be distributed and work on numerous nodes, but I couldn't find the number of nodes they possess so far. The system is not public. By the way, for those who think this kind of system is the blockchain, you can watch my video, is every chain the blockchain. So they put the hash of every real estate transaction into the private ledger storage and then periodically publish hashes of this private ledger into Bitcoin. Generally, it is called anchoring. Why do they do it? I once heard the director of the State Department responsible for this project in the Georgian government, speaking at a public webinar. She explained that the purpose is to protect the registry from potential penetration and disruption by hackers. Georgia was at war with Russia in 2008. There are many cyber threats, therefore they created this additional layer of protection. Unfortunately, anchoring does not protect the data, a typical misconception of this technology. I don't know if the public servant tried to mislead people intentionally or she was just incompetent. When you publish a hash sum of any piece of data, the blockchain protects the hash. It is immutable and there is no way you can tamper with it on Bitcoin, for example. But hashing is a one-way function which means that if the original data is lost or corrupt, there is no way the hash can help you to retrieve it. It doesn't make sense if you don't protect the data itself. Hash is just a digital data fingerprint. Having a fingerprint doesn't make sense if your finger is cut off. So the correct way to describe this system's purpose is to detect unauthorized changes in the database, not to protect or prevent anything, and surely not to restore the lost data. Cryptographic hash functions do not allow you to figure out what changed. It gives you the knowledge that the piece of data that you hashed before is not the same. Been left with the hash, you cannot figure out what changed. Here we should add that it is hashed not on an immutable blockchain, but in a closed centralized storage based on the Exonum DLT framework. It is as vulnerable as any other centralized technology, and it's not immutable. The one who controls it can change or even erase the ledger at will or it can be hacked. Only hashes of hashes are immutable because they are published in the Bitcoin network. In their case, they use a method of uh, Merkle tree to build the tree of hashes of the entries of the land registry database and publish root hashes of the tree on the blockchain. As the result of this pilot scheme, Georgia still has a centralized electronic registry of land titles as before and with the same bureaucratic registration. They didn't digitize or tokenize the property rights, hence there are no smart contracts, no DAOs, no DAPs and all other innovations that exist out there. Thanks for your attention and I hope it was informative. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe button. Hit the bell icon if you want to know more.